international community is working to address Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Oh, that's right. The NATO Secretary General will head to Poland and Estonia Tuesday as countries closer to the ongoing conflict express security concerns. NATO's response force was activated for the first time in history to protect NATO allies closest to Russia and Ukraine. Meanwhile, the U.N. General Assembly is meeting for the first time in 40 years to discuss Russia's actions. U.N. Secretary General Antonio Guterres said it is important nations around the world stand by the people of Ukraine. Although Russian strikes are reportedly largely targeting Ukrainian military facilities, we have credible accounts of residential buildings, critical civilian infrastructure, and other non-military targets sustaining heavy damage. This escalating violence, which is resulting in civilian deaths, including children, is totally unacceptable. Enough is enough. And the U.N. is not the only international body responding. Joining us now to talk more about NATO's response is Robert Bell. He is a defense advisor to the U.S. ambassador to NATO. Uh, Robert, thank you for being with us. Uh, this idea of NATO uh, activating uh, its uh, response force for the first time in history in this particular way, uh, help me understand what that means, help our viewers understand what that means exactly. I think it's extremely significant because it means that by consensus, in other words, unanimity, all 30 members of the North Atlantic Council, all the members of NATO agreed to take this step. Uh, the rotating brigade can get in in about a week. Uh, we put it together after the Crimea annexation in uh, 2014 and has been training and getting certified. But for all 30 members to agree to uh, vote in effect to, to send that brigade in uh, shows the strength and unity of the alliance. And Robert, we know NATO has sent weapons and ammunition, but should it send more? Should it be doing more? What else can NATO do to support Ukraine since it will not, of course, send ground forces? Is there something that could be done in the air, for instance? Well, I don't think the, the uh, no-fly zone in the air option really is available unless you're prepared to go right to the brink of World War III because to declare, if this is not Bosnia or Libya, to declare a no-fly zone, you would first have to make missile strikes and airstrikes and take out the Russian air defense systems and hit their interceptors on their bases. And that would mean an attack on Russia. Um, the escalatory risk of that would be phenomenal. But NATO has done quite a bit uh,